little pigs found a huge box at home. Even though they tried to open it, the lid was stuck and could not be opened. The youngest pig shook the box and tried to understand what was inside. The middle pig said, I think there are three little balls in there. The youngest pig replied, Hmm, if it were a ball, it would make a noise. This time, the eldest pig took the box in his hand and shook it quickly. I think there's something softer inside. After the three little pigs struggled a little more to open the box, the lid finally opened. Colorful balloons scattered from inside and spread around. The eldest pig collected the balloons and went out. His brothers followed him with curiosity. The eldest pig stood at the fountain in the garden. He filled the balloons with water one by one. The youngest pig excitedly shouted, Wow! The balloon's filled with water! His excited voice reached the wolf's sensitive ears. The wolf, who had been hungry for a long time, said, I think I hear a pig's voice, and followed the pig's trail. Finally, he reached where the three little pigs were and hid in the grass. The eldest pig, unaware of everything, said, Are you ready for the race to pop water-filled balloons? Realizing this, the wolf thought, Ugh! Getting wet is disgusting! My fur will be ruined! I don't like it at all! And the water balloon race has begun! Oh, ah! <laughs> While the brothers were laughing and having fun, the wolf grabbed the little pig by the neck and pulled him into the grass. But no one noticed this. The race continued. This time, the eldest pig threw the water-filled balloon in his hand at the middle pig. The middle pig escaped once, escaped twice, and at the third balloon burst on him. And he got soaked! While the eldest pig was happy, saying, I won! The hungry wolf grabbed the middle pig by the neck and pulled him away. The eldest pig was jumping joyfully, but then he suddenly stopped because his brothers were not around. Huh? Whoa! He called out, My brothers, where are you? However, the hungry wolf had already taken the pigs away and was waiting for them to dry out to eat. I can't eat you when you're wet! Yuck! He said. That's why the wolf decided to blow on the pigs. <sighs> At that moment, water-filled balloons rolled to the wolf's feet one by one. While the wolf was thinking, Huh, where did these come from? The eldest pig appeared at the entrance of the cave like a hero. Before the wolf could understand what was happening, the pig threw his giant water-filled balloon at the wolf. A giant balloon burst with a bang. When the wolf's fur got wet, he became heavy and made it difficult for him to move. He could neither eat the pigs nor escape from there. He could only say, I hate getting wet. The little pig ran to their eldest brother with joy. The little pig asked, How did you find us? His brother said, I followed your wet footprints. The little pigs hugged their eldest brother with admiration. When they returned home, they sewed a hero cloak for him and gave it as a gift. While the eldest pig was hugging his brother with his cloak, the wolf, whose fur was soaked, was looking for ways to dry himself. That morning, Goldilocks was very, very excited because she was going to ride the bike her mother bought her as a gift for the first time. Be careful, girl. Don't go too far. When Goldilocks got on her bike, she first wobbled a little, then started pedaling like she was flying. She was riding her bike so fast that when she slowed down for a moment and looked around, she realized that she was in a place she had never known. Huh? Where am I? This is a part of the forest I've never been to before. As Goldilocks realized that she had moved away from home, 
she was a little alarmed and decided to return. While she was riding her bike at full speed, she heard a pop. And she was thrown to one side and her bike to the other side of the road. Ow! My leg hurts! Oh! <laughs> Goldilocks was weeping, both because she got lost and because her tiger had burst. <laughs> but Goldilocks wasn't the only one crying. She straightened up to see who was crying in the forest besides herself. She dragged her bike with her and walked towards where the noise came from. Not far away, she saw a little pig sobbing. Piggy? Huh? Whoa! Who are you? Don't be afraid. I'm Goldilocks. Why are you crying, little piggy? <laughs> my skateboard! I lost my skateboard! <laughs> Hush! Don't cry! Look, my bike's tire burst too! I cried a lot, but that didn't help me fix my wheel. When little pig Gurky saw the flat tire, he forgot about his skateboard and calmed down a bit. What a beautiful bike this is! It is beautiful, but I've lost my way home, too. I have to be back before evening. The little pig forgot about his skateboard for a while when he felt sorry for Goldilocks. He told her that he knew every path in the forest very well and would help her. And maybe he could find his skateboard while walking. So Goldilocks and Gurky set off. However, after a while, a giant wolf appeared in front of them. It's Wolf! Aw, don't be afraid, Piggy. Maybe he's lost something too. Hello, Wolf. The wolf walked slowly towards them, hungrily. Yes, I lost my food. <sighs> but I think I found it now. I wonder, which one of you should I stomach first? Realizing the wolf's malice, Goldilocks was terrified, but stepped forward to protect the little pig. At this time, hunters roam the forest and hunt wolves. They'll catch you before you can harm us. The wolf took two steps back when he heard what Goldilocks had said. Hunters? <laughs> Oh, I'm so scared! <laughs> the wolf jumped on them with a quick move. The little pig managed to get away and escape. However, Goldilocks was trapped in the wolf's claws. Ah! Help! Help me! The wolf caught me! The wolf ran to his lair with Goldilocks in his arms. First I'll eat you up, then I'll go back and I'll catch that piggy! Although Gurky went after the wolf, he lost track of the wolf because he wasn't fast enough. Then he went back to his house to ask his brothers for help. On the other hand, the greedy wolf had already tied Goldilocks to the stone in his lair. All right, little girl, you wait here. I'll go catch the piggy too and have a nice feast tonight. As the wolf was about to come out of his lair, Goldilocks spotted the skateboard in the corner of the cave. Huh? The skateboard is Pig Gurky's skateboard. So it was you who stole it! The wolf was very angry with Goldilocks, who called him a thief. He took the skateboard, got on it, and had fun riding it left and right. This is my skateboard now! I'm even going to scratch my name on it with my claws now! <laughs> Meanwhile, the little pig Gurky and his brothers finally arrived near the lair. But since the wolf was so busy with skateboarding, he did not notice them. Gurky quietly approached Goldilocks. Hey, Piggy! Did you come to save me? Yeah, be quiet, Goldilocks. Gurky quickly untied Goldilocks. 
Wolf turned around with the skateboard in his arms and made eye contact with Goldilocks and Gurky. What? Is the piggy stealing my food? My skateboard! This is my skateboard! Here, in the hands of the wolf! The wolf threw the skateboard aside to jump on Goldilocks and the little pig. And while he was running towards them, Gurky's brother came in. They threw the small thorny chestnuts in their pockets towards the wolf. When the chestnuts stung at his feet, the wolf stumbled and fell to the ground. Ow! What are these? They hurt me! Come here, pigs. Now I'll catch you! However, this did not deter him, and he got up again. He was about to jump on the pig brothers with the thorny chestnuts clinging to him when Gurky grabbed the skateboard and quickly escaped from the cave, taking Goldilocks and his brothers behind him. We made it! Hey! Hooray! Hooray! Yeah! The greedy wolf stared at the retreating pigs and Goldilocks. Ugh. Phew! The wolf realized too late that stealing things that don't belong to him is a bad thing. When they got rid of the wolf and arrived at the pig's house, a surprise was waiting for Goldilocks. Come on, take the cover off! When Goldilocks lifted the cover, she saw her bike, which had already been repaired. And she was very happy. Oh, you fixed my wheel! Thank you, piggies! Gurky got on his skateboard, and Goldilocks got on her bike, and they headed home. From that day on, the little piggy and Goldilocks' friendship lasted a lifetime. Once upon a time, in a little cottage in the woods, lived a mother goat and her little goats leading a happy life. The little goats were very cute. They all were like toys. Mother Goat, like all mothers, loved her little goats very much. She protected them from all the wild animals in the forest. One day, before she left the house to find food in the forest, she called her little goats next to her and... My dear children, I am going into the forest. Do not open the door for anyone. If the wolf comes into the house, he will eat all of us alive. He's very shifty. He will disguise himself into different shapes and try to fool you. So how will we recognize him? The wolf has a rough voice, and I have a soft and sweet voice. So you can recognize him from his low and rough voice right away. Right when she was leaving, the mother goat remembered something else. She turned to her little goats. Ah, one more thing. The wolf's feet are black and mine are white. You can also recognize him from his feet. Don't worry, mother. We can protect ourselves. You can count on us. Mother goat kissed her little goats one by one and headed into the woods. The wolf was watching them from afar. When he saw Mother Goat leaving, he waited a while, and then he came in front of the cottage and knocked on the door. Who is it? Little goats, open the door. Your mother is here. I brought nice food for you all. But the little goats recognized the wolf's rough voice right away. Without opening the door, they yelled out. You're not our mother. Her voice is sweet and more beautiful. You're the wolf. You can't fool us. The wolf got very angry because he could not fool the little goats. So he went to the shop, bought a big piece of chalk and ate it. Now his voice sounded much softer. So he went back to the cottage and knocked on the door again. This time, the wolf started to talk with his soft voice. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I brought food from the forest for all of you. Hearing the wolf's soft voice, the little goats thought that it was really their mother this time. Just when they were about to open the door, one of them shouted, Wait, wait! Let's look at the feet from underneath the door. 
Of course, when the little goats looked from underneath the door, they saw the wolf's black feet. So they yelled again without opening the door. We will not open the door for you. Our mother's feet are not black. They are white. You're the wolf. As furious as he was, the wolf left. This time, he went to the bakery. When the baker saw the wolf in front of him, he was very surprised. I'm a vegetarian now, so I will eat pastry from now on. Could you give me some flour? The wolf came out of the bakery with a little sack of flour. When he got near the cottage, he opened the sack and poured all the flour on his feet. Now his feet were all white. The shifty wolf knocked on the door for the third time. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I have brought food for all of you from the forest. First, show us your feet so we know it's you, mother. The wolf showed them his feet with flour. When the little goats saw the white feet, they believed that it was their mother and opened the door. And what did they see? The wolf was standing right there in front of them. The little goats did not know what to do. They started to run around yelling. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I will catch all of you. One of the little goats went under the desk. The second one into the bed. The third one into the chimney. Fourth kid hid in the kitchen. The fifth one got into the closet. The sixth hid behind the curtain. And the seventh kid went into the giant clock on the wall. But the shifty wolf was quick, and one by one he caught them all from wherever they were hiding. Run! Run! Come here! Don't run! I will catch you all! I said stop! The only one he could not find was the one hiding in the clock. He was already full, so he gave up on looking for them and head out. There was a big yard a little further from the cottage. The wolf lay under a tree on the yard and started to sleep, snoring. Short while after, the mother goat returned home. When she saw the door open, she knew something bad had happened and started to scream. When she entered the house, she was shocked. The tables and chairs were all upside down. Curtains were torn. The beds were all messed up. The pillows and sheets were all on the floor. Mother Goat looked for her little goats but could not find them anywhere. She started to yell out their names one by one, but not one answered. Finally, it was time to call the last one's name. Only then she heard a high-pitched voice. Mother Goat ran to the grandpa clock and took her kid out of there. Mother Goat and kid hugged. The little goat started to tell the story, crying. The wolf came in disguise and we thought it was you and opened the door. The wolf ate all my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Goat was very upset. She cried for her little goats. With only one of her kids remaining, she walked out and started to go towards the yard. After a while, they saw the wolf sleeping under a tree. He snored so bad that the branches of the tree were shaking. Mother Goat observed the wolf for a while. She realized that inside his tummy, some things were moving. Oh my God! Can it be that my goats are in his tummy and they're still alive? She had a plan. She turned to her kid. Run home, bring me a needle, thread and the scissors. When the little kid was running home, Mother Goat collected six big rocks from the floor. After a while, the little goat came back with a needle, thread and the big scissors. Mother Goat cut open the wolf with the scissors. She saw one of her little goats right away. 
and then the other ones started to appear one by one. They were all healthy. Mother goat couldn't stay still from the joy she had. All the little goats hugged their mothers with joy. Mama, Mama, we love you! They were all full of joy. Ah, my little goats, you're safe! Mother goat put the rocks she collected carefully inside the wolf. Then she stitched his tummy with the needle and thread. The wolf was sleeping so deep he'd not feel anything. He did not move. Mother goat and her little goats quickly got away. When the wolf woke up, he stood up. His tummy hurt really bad. He thought to himself that it was because he ate too many goats. Because his tummy was full of rocks, he got really thirsty. He came next to the river to drink some water. But when he was walking, the rocks were hitting each other. My tummy feels so heavy and full. It's as if all the goats I ate turned into rocks. He wanted to kneel down and drink some water. Due to the rocks being so heavy, he lost his balance and slipped into the water. Oh, help! Help me! I'm drowning! Help! Yelled out for help, but no one helped him. He could not bear the weight of the rocks anymore and went under into deep waters. When they saw what happened, Mother Goat and her little goats ran to the river. The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! Yippee. Hand in hand, they all started to dance and jump around. From that day on, Mother Goat and her seven little goats had a peaceful and happy life in their cottage in the forest. Once upon a time, Right on the edge of the forest lived a golden-haired girl. This golden-yellow-haired girl's name was Goldilocks. She had such amazing and admirable locks that everyone who saw her was mesmerized. But despite her sweetness, at times she could be a rather naughty little girl. Every time she stepped out to play, her mother would have to warn her to behave. Darling, please stay in the backyard and don't go into the woods. Deep into the forest in a shack lived a bear family. A broad-shouldered papa bear, a medium-sized mama bear and a baby bear. Mama Bear always woke up early to prepare oatmeal porridge for breakfast. One morning, Baby Bear woke up earlier than usual and wanted to eat his porridge. But it was too hot. Mama, can we go out for a walk in the woods until our porridge cools down? Mama, Papa and Baby Bear left their porridges on the table and went out for a walk. The same morning, Goldilocks was playing in the backyard while waiting for her mum to prepare breakfast. But she was so bored of playing in the same yard all the time, and she was very curious about the deep parts of the forest. What would happen if I just went for a walk? She looked around, seeing that no one was around. She began running into the forest. When she got tired, she stopped and looked around. What a beautiful forest! Flowers, trees... Why didn't I come here before? She began to walk deeper into the forest. In the meantime, walking around with his family, the baby bear saw a beehive on the branch of a tree. Such a big beehive! I'm sure it is full of honey! Papa, can we eat some honey? No, my boy. That belongs to the bees. It's their home. We can't go in anybody's home and eat their food. It's not right. You're right. I think I will have to wait until we go home for my breakfast. Meanwhile, Goldilocks walked all by herself for such a long time. Finally, 
she got lost. She tried to turn back but could not make out the right way. She got really tired and hungry. She was almost in tears of her tiredness. She walked a little more and finally she came to the end of the road. And she came across the house of the bear family in between the trees. She quietly approached the house, walked around it, but she could not see anyone. She knocked on the door, but nobody answered. Then she looked through the window. She saw three hot steamy plates on the table. She went back to the door again, and this time she knocked hard. The door opened. Goldilocks was overjoyed. She looked in and yelled. Anybody home? When there was no answer, she entered. She approached the table. On the table, there were three bowls of porridge. One big, one medium-sized and one small. Because she was so hungry, she wanted to eat the big one first. But the moment she put the spoon in her mouth, whew, her mouth burned because the porridge was still too hot. She immediately reached the medium bowl, but she did not want to eat this either because it was too cold. It's too cold! Finally, she dipped her spoon into the smallest one. Mmm, this porridge is neither cold nor too hot. It's exactly the way I want it. So she ate all the porridge in the smallest bowl. When she was done with her breakfast and felt full, she wanted to sit on one of the three chairs in front of the chimney to rest for a while. One of the three chairs was a big one, the other one medium, and the last one was a small one. First she tried to sit on the big one, but she couldn't even climb on it. She tried the medium one, but this one was very hard. It was very uncomfortable. Finally, she sat down on the smallest one. This one was very comfortable and exactly her size. But suddenly, the chair broke into pieces with a very loud noise. Goldilocks found herself on the floor and she did not know what to do. She walked through to the next door, and here there were three beds. A big, a medium-sized, and a small one. First she tried the big bed. This one was too big for her, and also too hard. Second one was a little bigger than her size, but also too soft. So she lied down on the third and smallest bed. This one was exactly her size and it was very comfortable. So comfortable that Goldilocks fell asleep right away. Whilst Goldilocks was sleeping, the bear family came back home. Papa Bear had some wood with him that he collected for the chimney. Mama Bear had fresh berries and Baby Bear just could not wait to have his porridge. When they arrived home, they went straight to the table. Papa Bear had a look at his bowl and was so angry. Somebody tasted my porridge. Mama Bear also looked at her bowl. Somebody also tasted my porridge. And when Baby Bear looked at his bowl, he began to cry. <laughs> that somebody also tasted my oatmeal porridge. Not only tasted it, also ate it all. <laughs> they got up and started to look around. Papa Bear noticed his chair in front of the chimney. Somebody sat on my chair. Look, it's on a different spot. And then it was Mama Bear's turn to complain. Somebody also sat on my chair. And just like before, the baby bear began to cry again. <laughs> Somebody also sat on my chair, but broke it too. <laughs> 
The bear family curiously went to the bedroom. Somebody lied on my bed. Look how it's undone. Somebody lied on mine too. Somebody lied on my bed too. Then is still sleeping in it. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Bear walked next to Baby Bear's bed and saw that someone really was sleeping in his bed. Slowly lifted up the blankets, and they were really surprised to see a little girl sleeping in the bed. What is a little girl doing in our house? <laughs> Tell this little girl to get out of my bed now! <laughs> Waking up to Baby Bear's crying, Goldilocks saw three bears in front of her, and she ran out of the room in great fear. She went out of the house and started running without looking back. She got breathless from running, but she did not stop, and she didn't even know which way to go. Right at that moment, she saw her parents coming across from the forest. When she didn't end up going back home, they went out looking for her. Goldilocks was very happy to see her parents. She ran and hugged her mother. <laughs> oh, mummy! We were so worried. Are you okay? From now on, I will always listen to you. I will never leave without letting you know. <laughs> Goldilocks hugged her parents really tight. From that day on, as she promised, she always listened to her parents and did nothing without having their permission. She was a well-behaved and kind girl forever.